this guy right here, Jonathan Applegate, he does a lot of things for Mazda Motorsports, not just running that program for North American Arm, but this guy is a dream maker because through him, through Mazda, Mazda MX-5 Cup program, grassroots programs, you name it, yeah. there's a lot of money put behind achievement. Absolutely. There's no gifts. Has to be earned. 100%. We just completed an amazing season. Mazda MX-5 Cup presented by Michelin. We have a new champ who's a repeat champ. We got a young kid who's rookie of the year. Yeah. And that kid's gonna shoot straight to the top here in the coming years. Absolutely. And thanks to you, thanks to Mazda, this is a long-standing thing you've been doing. Yep. You put money behind achievement to help them level up stay where they are, give them options. Tell us about this year that just wrapped, Jonathan, and seeing the byproduct of what you put out there for kids to achieve, yeah. they've received now. What an amazing thing. So amazing and exciting to see all of the final results and the fruits of the labor of these young racers. The talent level, top to bottom, in this series is something to talk about on a, at every event weekend. And, but I think where we are for Mazda, yes, certainly we back them with a tremendous amount of money and funding, as you said, earning it. Yeah. But it starts with our racers producing to us where we need to be and how we should be supporting them. Yeah. And I think it starts with us in the grassroots, where we're seeing thousands of young racers with their families and their dads yeah. and their moms building their race cars, racing spec Miata, racing spec MX-5, and having that ambition and that dream to be something bigger. And for us to support them, not in terms of just technical support and parts and being there with boots on the ground, but truly getting alongside them and seeing and creating a path for them to get into MX-5 Cup, um, that's, I think, where our heart is, is really just in the part of how we support our racers and continue to evolve that, that model. MX-5 Cup has definitely evolved over the years, and we've seen that the model not necessarily worked five years ago, might not necessarily work five, you know, now. And that's why in 2021, we partnered in sanctioned with IMSA yeah. to really define who we are with MX-5 Cup. That's our ambitious program. That's where our top level racers are. But as we sunsetted the DPI program a few years ago, we know that this is our target, our, our, our core program, our professional spec program. And how do we continue to grow? How do we continue to find opportunities outside of scholarship funds and, and writing a $250,000 check to our champion, an $80,000 check to our rookie of the year, Weston Workman, who, who by the way, Marshall, I think, when we interviewed him in uh, Sebring in March, he told us he was going to win Rookie of the Year. Look, if he I called a that. shot. I think he called a shot. He's also going for champ. He said he didn't quite get that. Yeah, he, he did. Wants, he wants to come back next year and it, fix it, that problem. Yes, let's let that hang out there in front of him and let him chase that. But um, outside of that, we knew that being here in this space, and by the way, just being on Petit Le Mans, this just tremendous opportunities to yeah. grow, to see what else is out there, and for these racers to really put themselves on the map and continue to make that climb in professional sports car racing. So just all of that culminating together is really where our heart is. So we're gonna to speak to our new champ, Gresham Wagner here in just a moment. Also Rookie of the Year, Weston Workman, both fine young gentlemen. Yeah. I wanna close with you though, Jonathan, talking about the impact within Mazda, right? You know all the drivers, you know everybody involved in MX-5 Cup, obviously, but each year a champ gets identified, they let the world know who they are, yep. Rookie of the Year. What do you guys do within Mazda? Do you get them yeah. in to meet folks and showcase them a little bit? Because we're here at the racetrack, this is right. where we love to be, yep. but Monday through Fridays, you're in an office environment, in a corporate exactly. setting. How do these champions and young rookies and such get introduced to the greater Mazda family? Because yeah. uh, they do become part of your family. Absolutely, absolutely. I think we do that in many different ways and um, from, from the dealership side of the business and local markets and regions where these racers live, getting them involved at the dealership level, becoming a brand ambassador, like acting as if they're on the sale, sales room floor, bringing their cup car out, trying to find the synergies between, which is not hard, between the MX-5 Miata production vehicle and the MX-5 cup car, getting people excited on that level. From a community perspective, we bring them into the Mazda corporate side with just um, social media influencer programs and campaigns where we can actually showcase our brand values through them. You know, one of our, um, our, our purposes is enriching the lives of those we serve. And I think 
motorsports does such a good job of conveying that by not just our support, but them really showcasing to us what our values are. They're passionate, they believe in their, their pursuit. And that's also how we carry ourselves as a brand. So for them to be out in front of that and us using them and leveraging them as a brand ambassador and an influencer, it's just so natural to do on, on all the different levels. Um, I do think though that you know, for us, we have to continue to find ways to showcase motorsports and continue to find new opportunities for these racers to be uh, more valuable to us internally. So for me, like uh, I report to uh, the Chief Marketing Officer, Brad Audette, uh, uh, respect him tremendously and work with him to see like what can we do more on an everyday basis to try to showcase motorsports and our values in motorsports. So good examples there, but um, also you were with us at uh, the Her with our Heritage Collection program at Reunion. So like just finding other ways creatively is yeah. now with a new champion, we'll be able to bring a new driver into one of our historic race cars. So that's going to be another cool opportunity. Genuine love and passion for what Mazda does in this space. If you look at IMSA's ladder system, there are a lot of series. We've got Porsches running behind us. We'll yep. have all kinds of other cars running. In theory, Mazda is at the foundation, really the base of starting that graduation ladder-wise upwards. But you look at what y'all do, not just in the financial contributions to help young drivers live their dreams, but also the onboarding them on the corporate side and all the yes. other things. These are not things that typically happen when you're kind of getting at the entry level of the professional side. So I just hope folks respect the fact that it's not uncommon in other places in the world for things to be small and minimal. Correct. Y'all treat this like this is, this is running in the WeatherTech Sports Car Absolutely. Championship level. Yeah. And it's that approach that has folks coming back and loving this series. Some of the greatest racing you'll find anywhere. So I got to love on Jonathan Albigate Appreciate here that. and the entire Mazda family because they are truly making dreams happen here in IMSA. We go racing many times each year. Definitely to go for victories, success, accolades, championships. Gresham Wagner, you are not unfamiliar with success in this Michelin Mazda MX-5 Cup Championship, but tell me about this crowning achievement, a brilliant weekend here at this lovely track, Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta, but tell me about clinching here in a wild season finale. Yeah, um, I mean, it's been a couple years since my first championship, so... Um it uh, it's, hasn't been unsuccessful in the, in the gap in between, but um, I never you know, man, managed to cross the line there, um, getting the championship uh, in 22 or 23. So um, you know, the longer after the first one, the more you want the second one. Uh, I think everybody that wins a championship in anything will say that. So um, yeah, I didn't come into this, this uh, weekend with the, the lead in the championship like I did my first time. So it was a bit of a different approach, but um, I got a bit lucky yesterday and you know had had the championship in my lap almost so just had to do the right things today and um you know i was just really really relieved um more than excited just because um it's just so much pressure year on year when you don't get it to finally get it and and be able to say yeah i've, I've done it twice now and i'm still you know really good at what i do this is the fun side of big endorphins and then an endorphin release where everything kind of settles back down. Not only a phenomenal drive for you yesterday and today culminating in this championship, but just had a podium with uh, a lot of familiar friends there. The, uh, the good old Chad McCombie and Steve McAleer, a heck of a powerhouse team. Speak about that, Gresham, because there's nothing but great teams in the MX-5 Cup Series, but it's always fun to see year to year how they ebb and flow and who rises and whatnot. Tell me about your team, uh, Phil on the podium, you being the champ. This must be a statement about this program of yours. Yeah, I mean, I think it was, it was hard to look at that finish and not think that MMR did a great job to, to get to that point and then to, to have us all here at the finish. So, um, you know, I didn't know exactly how I was going to shake out the, the team dynamic. I knew we were all quick and, and all wanted, um, you know, to be to be the, the top guy in the team. Um, but, you know, you also can't get there without your teammates. So it's um, it's kind of uh, mutually beneficial to just work through the season and, um, you know, see how it kind of shakes out. But you can't you can't race your teammates too hard because it all comes back around. And, um, you know, unfortunately, um, you know, my teammates didn't necessarily have the luck at the end of the year that they needed. but. 
Um, obviously, they had the speed, and to have all of us come into the final race mathematically with a chance to, to be champion, uh, I'm super happy to be able to get it myself. But um, I'm also just really proud to, to be able to fill up the podium. You know, they didn't get the championship, but they still showed that they, you know, they were just as deserving through the year and, and just as quick to be able to be one, two, three. Um, and I'm just really happy for, for the team and all the work that they put in to be able to see their drivers up there and know that you know they did a good job. Um, you know, prepping the cars and, and, and doing everything behind the scenes so that we can go shine. Wow. Let's close on this. Double champion, two-time champ now, two titles in a span of four years. In a ladder series like MX-5 Cup, most young drivers like yourself have ambitions of going higher. Also, love racing in the series. So give us your thoughts looking to the future. Are you looking to 2025 saying, you know, being a three-time champ has a heck of a sound to it, but you also hoping to expand into any of the other classes here within IMSA racing as well and make that more of your future as well? Yeah, I mean, um, there's two elements to it. There's there's wanting to, to come back and, and be successful and prove that, that you can do it again. And, um, you know, the, the, the hardest races are right here, the ones you have to earn the most. Um, you know, I'm sure it's, it's not easy in any of the other classes, but uh, MX-5 certainly doesn't give it to you easy. So... Uh, I think that constant challenge is, is what brought me back. And then, I mean, the second part is obviously uh, it gets more expensive as you go up there. So, um, you know, with the prize that, uh, that Mazda has, um, it allowed me to be able to keep coming back to the series and, and keep, keep it sustainable. Um, you know, if I moved up, I, I might get a year, but it's a lot more, more risk. So um, I've stayed here for a while. I've been very happy here. I've expanded into, into some other areas with some other sanctioned bodies. and. Um, you know, of course, I'd still want to be in the, the IMSA paddock um, next year, but um, without, uh, you know, lying about anything, I just don't know what, what next year holds. So um, got a few things I'm looking at, but, um, you know, if you, if you know that you have the 250 from Mazda uh, beforehand, it makes the conversations a lot easier. And with the way this championship is, you don't know until the final race of the season whether you're going to have that money or not. So the planning starts today, I guess. Another young, phenomenal talent proving he has everything it takes not only to win here, Mazda MX-5 Cup, but also to level up Gresham Wagner. Congratulations on another title. Thank you. Weston Workman, we get to call you many things. Supreme young driving talent, person working hard in college to get his education, person who works out five to seven days a week, and how about Rookie of the Year? Tell us about that. When we spoke earlier in the year, Weston, you said you wanted to be Rookie of the Year and to win the championship as a rookie. Didn't quite get there, but you showed us a lot. You have that potential. Right. I think we had a great season. Uh, BSI gave me a great car all season. Um, you know, when we, when we spoke, I didn't have any wins on the season, and, and I, I felt like he gave me good luck, Marshall. Yeah. Uh, I, had, I had two wins after we spoke on the season um, and two more podiums as well. So. You know, we, we really had a great season. I feel like I had a really great showing as a rookie this year in the MX-5 Cup Series. Great team that you're with. Michelin, big supporter of this. Mazda, obviously, this MX-5 Cup. It's just, it's a powerhouse program to develop young talent. You're out there fighting with other young guns. Right, you got yeah. some veterans out there too, right? right? Kind of yeah. keeping you honest. Tell me about that dynamic, because to get those wins and podiums, you got to fight through a lot of quality. Right, yeah, so it, it really started about four or five years ago. Uh, I've been very fortunate for all the opportunities that Mazda's given me this year. Um, it's, I've competed in the shootout about four times, the Mazda shootout, um, and I got lucky one year. Um, they just inaugurated the Spec MX-5 shootout, and that's how I got involved with Mazda Motorsports and the MX-5 Cup and, and, and the IMSA paddock. Um, so I competed in the, in the Spec MX-5 shootout twice and then competed also in the MX-5 Cup shootout twice, and I won it last year. That's a big reason that why I'm here, uh, following the footsteps of Nate Cicero. He was my teammate yeah. in Spec MX-5 when I won the, the shootout that year. Um, Connor Zillish, uh, many great names that have came through the Mazda ladder. Two more things for you. There is someone smiling about as wide as can be on pit lane. That is your dad. <laughs> so with every young driver trying to work their way up, there's usually a family element. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that support. Uh, your dad, again, kind of the beacon of this, but I know there's a whole family behind you. Yeah, you know, my, my family's been super supportive of me all throughout my karting years, um, even more supportive throughout my car years. Um, without them, it wouldn't have been possible. My mom, my dad, my grandparents, um, everybody who supports me. 
Um, and, you know, even though, you know, I might be down on myself sometimes, my dad's always there to, to cheer me up and my mom as well. Um, you know, I, I could finish last and my dad's still proud of me. So that, that's, that's been a big part of my career this year, just having really those supporters behind me that, that support me no matter what. Close on this. So MX5 Cup Rookie of the Year. You've got some other opportunities in some other series. So that's a beautiful thing, right? right. That says this is working. Doors mm -hmm. are opening for you. Right. You want to come back, though, I because you're back. happy at being Rookie of the Year, happy. not happy at being the champion. <laughs> right. So nothing solved yet there, but tell folks you're working on trying to come back and go for that title you, in 2025. Yeah, you know, this, this sport is different than anything else. You really have to put the budget together and find the right supporters that support you. I mean, Maz has been a big supporter of me this year. I'm with winning in a shootout, but, you know, it, it's, it's my job to, to continue that for next year. Uh, so we're trying to put a program together for next year to come back and run MX5 Cup again. Um, you know, I, I'm, I, I would like to move up to the next level, but it's, it's very important for me to prove myself at the level I'm at before I start moving up because I don't want any external factors being the reason why I move up through the motorsports ladder, whether that be money, whether that be, you know, any, anything like that. I, I, I want to be the best driver I can at the level I'm at and then move up and let, let my driving do the talking. Another one of the great young talents coming up the ladder in IMSA. Weston Workman, congratulations on Rookie of the Year status going for more next year. Thank you so much, Marshall.